is Stephen Ness, and I'd like to t tell you a little bit about the Mercury Project, which is a new project that we're working on um, that we're just trying to start up at UVic. And so that's kind of how to connect students and researchers and have them listening to whales. So um, the whales that we're interested in are orca killer whales around here, Orcinus orca, and they're these very intelligent social animals they have a very interesting language, so I've actually made a little Android application that you can listen to their language. So they have all these different calls. It's this real language. So that's an M2 call, and here's an M3 call. So they have this language that um, has been studied for a number of years, and we want to um, kind of analyze and look at that language. And the Mercury Project is a new way to look at that that connects students with our researchers. And so killer whales are found all over the world, but here in around Victoria, we have three distinct populations, the resident, the residents, the transients, and the offshores. And the ones we're interested in studying are the resident whales, and they eat salmon, and because salmon don't hear very well underwater, the whales talk a lot back and forth to each other. So we're interested in studying that language. So these whales are very long-lived creatures. Down here, there's a whale called J2. That's her scientific name, and people call her Granny. She just turned 100 years old. So here in the water, right here, we have these amazing, intelligent, long-lived creatures that we want to study. What they're trying to do, the NO, NOAA, the NOAA in the States, they actually want to attach satellite tags onto these whales. There's these extremely endangered populations. Down here we have 88 whales, 88 killer whales down in the southern residence. So it's this very small population. And satellite tagging just isn't that cool. Like you're shooting this, these whales with these darts and the, the, the darts stay in them and you're kind of recording the sound and also where they go. So we're trying to find out different ways to get the same scientific data without having to tag them. So instead of tagging them, we're listening to them. And there's two big projects that we've been working on and Mercury will kind of extend that. So the two big projects is we have the archive and we have Venus and Neptune. The archive is a really interesting project where we're um, taking the data that was collected by Paul Spong and Helena Simons up at Hansen Island, and they have over 20,000 hours of orca recordings. We've been studying these for the last uh, five years, and we've come up with some interesting conclusions. The new thing that's happening is the Venus and Neptune projects where these massive underwater observatories. We know more about the surface of Mars than we know about our own oceans. We're trying to change that and learn more about the oceans. The Venus and Neptune projects are these huge multi, multi-million dollar projects. Neptune has like $130 million in funding. So Orca Lab is this great little research station up at Hanson Island, the north end of Vancouver Island. It's a little island off of there. They place it there because the salmon migrate there in the summer and the orcas will then eat the salmon there. So that's where the data came from. The archive is these hydrophones that are in the water that were listening to whales all the time. The Venus and Neptune projects are similar to that, but instead of just listening, they're also collecting a whole bunch of other kinds of scientific data. So Venus is up here in the Salish Sea. You can see here's Victoria down here, and the hydrophones are up there. The Neptune project is this massive, um, very expensive network of hydrophones. And you can see here's Vancouver Island here, and here's all of these um, ocean observatories out there. The only problem with the Venus and Neptune projects is they haven't placed, and it's not really a problem, it's like a design what they designed it for, is that they're not placed where the whales really are. Orca Lab placed their hydrophones where they know the whales are, and Venus and Neptune place them where there's very interesting scientific data, but very few whales that are talking. So the Mercury Project is a very affordable, um, low-cost way to um, deploy hydrophones using technology like in your cell phone. So technology has become so cheap to do these remote, uh, low-cost mesh networks. You could just attach a little hydrophone and you can make like a $5 hydrophone. Having these very low-power, inexpensive devices and creating these mesh networks. My uh, concept is we'll have these mesh networks all up and down the coast with the data centers are in the schools. So the students are collecting the data, 
analyzing the data, learning the Orca languages, and then communicating that. <laughs> so um, my, um, uh, I'm uh, doing my PhD in computer science, and my thesis is that we'll have um, citizen scientists, like these students, people who want to look, um, who are very interested in um, specific problems, like either is it like, uh, well, are they interested in language or listening to the whales, combining that with expert collaborators, there's just very few people who know these Orca languages, so connecting those people and then connecting that all with something called machine learning, which is something we're heavily involved with at UVic, which is new ways to create kind of artificial intelligence-like things. But instead of artificial intelligence, we're enhancing and augmenting the intelligence of people. So the archive, you can go there if you Google for archive. It's this live data site where you can listen to all the hydrophone data and analyze it looking at it. Uh, if you Google for it, you'll find that. Here's one where you can annotate the different calls. So we have two calls here at the N47 and N4 call that a researcher has annotated. Uh, the orcas have this whole language, these orca vocalizations. So here's an example of an N8 call and an N83 call. And you can look at the spectrogram and see that they have very distinct shapes, very distinct information in them. You can bring that then into the archive. And then by using machine learning, then we can go and do predictions on those um, things that the users have found. So for instance, in this one, we had an expert user go in and look at um, label whether the N1 calls and the N7 calls. Those are in the solid lines. And then the colors are the things that the machine learning picked out. So you can see that the colors are lining very nicely upon the data that the user entered. So these systems where a user would have to a manual an manually annotate maybe 5% of the data, and the computer would then figure out um, what are the other calls based on that amount of data. Crowdsourcing is a really important part of this. We're using the students to both collect the data and do some of the analysis of the data. So for instance, this Galaxy Zoo is a really neat website that NASA came out with recently, where they had this problem where they had the galaxies, and galaxies can either um, spiral uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. And the Galaxy Zoo project had people going in and categorizing, is it um, spinning in the left, in a clockwise, or in a counterclockwise direction? That's very hard for computers to do, but it's really simple for anyone to do, for, for a human to do. So it's using these tasks that are very hard for computers, but very easy for any human to do. You can hear if a, if a work is singing or not, and that's a difficult problem for a human, but it's very easy uh, for a computer, but very easy for a human. So in the Mercury project, we're gonna have these very uh, affordable hydrophones and small computers deployed in trees all up and down the coast, and I wanna have tens to hundreds of thousands of these hydrophones deployed. The data, data centers will be in schools. We'll start off with local schools, schools in Victoria, and then we'll in, install just a very few hydrophones in the first phase. And in the second phase, then we'll go to a few more schools in the local area, maybe a few uh, islands further away. And then in the final phase, we'll be deploying these hydrophones all up and down the coast, all the way up, up to Sointula and um, Port Hardy, and even in the Queen Charlotte Islands or the Haida Gwaii Islands. So the idea is that the data centers, are in, data centers are in schools, so the students will learn about cloud computing and learn about all of this, as well as learning about the ORCA vocalizations. So what do I need? I need, to, I've spent about $1,000 uh, of my own money um, building some uh, early prototypes, and now we need some more money so that we can build some better prototypes and start talking to schools and then within five years, I want to um, have this whole project all running, and I'm estimating it'll cost about a million dollars to install 10,000 to 100,000 hydrophones all up and down the coast. So we're aiming for students in grades 8 to 12, and another very important thing is about this is that all the data is um, Creative Commons and open source so that anyone can um, analyze this data and look at this data around the world. Thank you very much.